decided to do a little bit of a plant unboxing today because I was really impressed by this one company, but it is not a typical houseplant unboxing because it's actually not houseplants. Um, although arguably maybe you can grow some of these indoors, they're mainly plants for outdoors. And I was meaning to actually plant these in my community garden, but if any of you have been tuning into my Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn, you will have find that my community garden actually unceremoniously closed. Hey guys, so I am back behind in the community garden and um, I'm not supposed to be back here because it's, uh, it's supposed to be closed. But I got a bunch of plants in and I wanna plant them up. So I'll, uh, I'll show you what I have and then I'm gonna do some planting and the guys at night and I hope I don't get caught. I feel like a fugitive planting. So I got a bunch of winter green right here and some cedars. And there's some politics behind it, but you know, mainly they wanna make sure that everybody feels safe for coronavirus. Um, they shared that it was an executive order by the governor and the mayor, but it is not necessarily, it's, you know, it's suggested, but it's up to actually the garden manager and the steering committee to come up with a plan to open up the garden. And we have a garden that's actually quite sizable for the city. It's very easy to social distance. So. Fingers crossed that it actually opens, but I did order some plants for the garden and now I'm going to have to actually plant them elsewhere, maybe temporarily on my fire escape. But um, when I was ordering some of these outdoor plants, I've been ordering from companies that I haven't really ordered from before. And I was really, really impressed by the quality of the plants and the packing job that was done by this company called Rare Roots. It's based out of Virginia. And I just wanna actually show it because I opened up a box from them already, but I have another box that I ordered because I was, again, so impressed by the plants. And um, some of these are native plants, some of them are not. And I really was looking for plants that I could plant up, um, you know, as ground cover. And in the community garden, there's lots of different areas some of it really dry and in the sun, some of it in partial shade, some of it in total shade. So it's been fun actually picking plants. So uh, let me see if I could actually show you how this is packed. Oh, can I, oh, see this? Very neatly packed. Let me make sure I'm showing it correctly. There you go, very neatly packed. You know, nothing damaged, you could see that um, this box is very nicely done. So I'm gonna show you a little bit more of the plants that I ordered. Now I could show you, they come out like this, so you could just walk around almost, you know, carrying these in a little box or bag. I mean, look how cute that is. So I'm gonna show you, the first one I'm gonna show you is a plant that I had already ordered and had an opportunity to plant in the garden before it closed because before they changed the locks, truth be told, I actually went in at night. and was like a fugitive planting the plants in the ground. I tell you, the city, the city can make you feel like a fugitive when you wanna actually garden or feed birds or anything along those lines. There's so many different restrictions um, that you cannot believe that gardening could be a defiant act, if you will. But this is one of the ones that I wanted to show you. This is called Rubus calicinoids, but look at that quilted texture of that leaf. Now this is not native to North America. I believe this is native to Thailand. And this is a Rubus, so it's related to raspberries and blackberries and it will get a little berry on it. I don't know if it's edible. Um, I'm assuming it's actually edible. I don't know how nutritious it is for if it's tasty or if it's actually nutritious to some of the, the birds out there. I mean, typically if you're trying to build a wildlife garden, you wanna to try to plant with more native plants. Um, but I like doing both native and sometimes non-native. And again, this will actually spread out to be a really cool ground cover and works well in very drought stricken areas. And even though I can't plant this up in my community garden, I figured I would do some planter boxes on my fire escape and this would be a lovely one that could hang over but you can imagine this in like um, 
or I can imagine this at least, I don't know about you, but I can imagine this in, you know, like a rock garden um, or near my paving stones of like a little trail. So I actually ended up getting two of those. Now these are actually much smaller than the initial ones that I got, but I'm assuming if you give them some good sunlight, they'll actually start to scramble about. And um, I would imagine also just like a rubus, the raspberries that I'm used to, they kind of get onto the ground, they start um, putting their roots in there and they're very, very easy to, to propagate. Um, you actually have to be careful because sometimes raspberry bushes and blackberry bushes can bramble and just um, turn a little bit more into a, a weed if you're not careful. I actually had to trellis my raspberries up in the community garden. The Brooklyn Botanic Gardens gave us some of the raspberries and I ended up trellising them up so that the, the stems don't hang down and root up into some areas because, you know, they do get prickles and everything. Oh my goodness, this foliage and the smell of this foliage is so good. This is Artemisia arborescence. And I believe this is a cultivated variety. It might actually be um, a hybrid, but you could see the silvery gray foliage and it smells so good. I'm not quite sure what it smells like. It's like a, it's very delicate. And you can imagine that if this actually, this could get um, a pretty shrubby. And um, if you have a darker garden, uh, you could you could bring in that silvery foli foliage and I like how it's dissected. It's actually quite soft as well. And um, it's named after Artemis, you know, the goddess of the moon in, in Greek culture. But, uh, and, and maybe it's because of the way that the, when the, when the moon shines, maybe it reflects very beautifully at night. But yeah, my plan was to plant this up. It, it needs a little bit more fuller sun and to plant it up in a part of a garden where it can bring in a little bit more of that gray green foliage, which is um, always nice to have some different colors of green. Again, look at, look at these boxes, so neatly packed, right? And they recently watered the plants because it's a little bit heavier. You know, sometimes you get plants that are very dried out and it's cheaper on shipping, but these are retaining their moisture really well. I mean, again, super impressed about how these guys have uh, packed their plants and the way that their plants look. Um, they're actually quite full, you know, for being four inches. And I only ordered once from this company, you know, just a couple weeks ago. And again, like I said, so impressed that I had to order again. And I really like their selection. They have a really nice curated selection. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, this is um, Asclepius verticillata. So anybody who is a big fan of monarchs and wanting to conserve the monarchs, you will know that they love milkweed and Asclepius is the genus for milkweed. And this is more commonly known as world milkweed, meaning W-H-O-R-L-E-D. And I liked it because there is a little bit more delicate nature of this. And when I think of Asclepius or Asclepius syriaca, I think of the thicker leaves, but um, this one is much more delicate. And I, I really wanted to try this. Um, it's, it's better in drier conditions, full sun conditions maybe even a little bit more like clay soil. And really in our community garden, we have so many different areas of the garden that you um, have the opportunity to plant all sorts of different types of plants. Um, if you're just you know, planting outside of your raised bed, uh, we have dry areas where I could do rock gardens. We have uh, rain gardens, so um, you could plant more like sweet joe pie weed and some other Asclepius like swamp milkweeds. Okay, let's see what I have here. I don't actually recognize it. Oh, Herniaria glabra. This is another one of the ground covers that I got. Never planted this before. But again, I'm actually trying different kinds of ground covers in the community garden because it's actually quite bare ground. And between the paving stones, there is a range of light. So we have full sun, partial sun, partial shade, all the way to shade. So trying different plants within the paving stones, I have like some creeping thyme. Like I said, I have some of this, this rubus, um, hernaria we could try. Um, I picked some up from Crest Hardware and Garden Center recently, some other ground covers that I haven't ever tried before, but there was a gentleman who had mentioned one of the ones that I picked up. He's like, it's really great. One of the, I can't even remember the name of the species that I got, but he, but he concurred that he actually has it between his paving stones. 
And, um, and he said it's really great, but it doesn't spread as quickly. So, you know, we'll try that. I get so excited for planting outside and I can't believe the community garden closed. It's, it's just, just an abomination, but I voiced my concerns. I don't think the garden manager was very pleased that I voiced my concerns because it's a little bit like a challenge of power, but it, I don't look at it that way. I just look at it as if you don't tell people how you feel, you're not going to get hurt and people are gonna think that you actually don't care. And I don't wanna challenge anybody's power, but I wanna make sure that you know some of the folks that care about the garden who might be too shy are actually heard. We have a huge Bengali pep population in the garden and that, they really use that as a place of solace. They use that as a place you know, if you go down to the brass tacks of it, it's a food justice issue because they really use it as a place to grow a lot of their own foodstuffs that they don't usually or you can't usually get in the store. So I'm talking about taro root, I'm talking about amaranth, I'm talking about Chinese spinach. These are things that are really hard to come by even at green markets and it's expensive. So you might as well like grow your own stuff. So this is Veronica perduncularis, Georgia blue. Now, this is not native. We do have native speedwells. The common name is this Georgia blue speedwell, but this is not a native one to New York. But it gets this really beautiful blue flower. And again, one of those ones that could just kind of cascade over, it doesn't grow too high. So I would say that this is kind of like somewhere between a ground cover and a hanging basket plant. And actually I might plant this up in one of my um, hanging baskets out on my fire escape along with the rubus. That might actually look really pretty. And then um, I have one more right here. So let me pull it up. This one is Calaroho Involcarata. Uh, and um, so they get like poppy-like flowers, these pink poppy-like flowers. And again, this is a little bit more like a ground cover. It doesn't get too, too high. And again, I just wanted to see if I could create these little carpets. I love the idea of an alternative to lawns. I mean, lawns are nice to a certain extent. It helps break up or maybe draw attention to the garden. It's obviously a place that you could like roll around in, or if you have kids, it's a great place for kids to roll around in and kick the ball and stuff like that. But if you're trying to create a little bit more of a wildlife corridor or a wildlife garden, or if you want to attract more pollinators, trying to get something other than grass is going to be um, the way to go. And uh, and because you want to get all that like insect life in the ground. So, you know, I'm talking about like caterpillar and beetle larvae, you're going to get more birds that way. Uh, you know, if any of these ground covers actually flower, like even like creeping thyme I'm thinking of, they get those little fuchsia purple flowers and they smell when you walk through it, it smells like thyme. So it gives you that herby scent, but that will attract a lot of pollinators like bees. So, I mean, like I said, even the rubus, I don't know if the fruit is edible, but um, I'd venture to see. And if it is, I'm sure some of the birds are actually going to, to feast on it. So the fruit eating birds at the very least. So this is my collection from Rare Roots. Again, this is, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I was just like really, really impressed by the plants that they have sent. And again, how they pack it because you know, many of us are not necessarily always going to garden centers. We don't have um, a great range of plants at our garden centers. Sometimes it's hard to find native plants at our garden centers. And more and more people are buying online and some places that are selling their plants uh, actually do a really good job packing them and sending them as if you could have like, you know, packaged them yourself and drove them out in your car from your local garden center. So anyway, highly encourage it. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and I will do some more unboxings here. All right guys, enjoy and take care. Interested in developing a deeper relationship with the people and plants around you? Then check out my book, How to Make a Plant Love You. Cultivate green space in your home and heart. More information up on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com. And if you're looking for more tactical plant care, then you could turn to the Houseplant Masterclass, which is the first online audiovisual course on houseplant cultivation, care, maintenance, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com.